I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes, yes, girl. You know, threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. The first time he had left was the first time me and her met. Throughout the whole time, even told him me. that we were sleeping together no, after she, he had no, they didn't. Had sex with her downstairs or the same chair he's sitting in there yeah. playing Xbox. Here's a, you 46 year old married man, Mr. Hartfield. What game is this you feel like you need to play with a 22 year old girl, girl where your line is, I'm horny? There was a lot more to the mix than the regular old story of trying to find out who the father of the child is. Ms. Parker was beyond certain that the defendant fathered her child, even though he had a girlfriend. Mr. Morton, the defendant, however, claimed the timeline for her pregnancy just didn't add up. Could Ms. Parker be trying to pin the baby on him? In your suit, you claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. In addition to the paternity test, you're suing for $2,047 in back child expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Well, I wasn't expecting to hear that. Now the judge is amazed by the fact that Ms. Parker got intimate with Mr. Morton, knowing he had a girlfriend. She then proceeds to ask what kind of relationship Ms. Parker had with Mr. Morton, and what she says leaves the entire courtroom in shock. We're having sex We've had with... sex... I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Yes. Oh! So it's threesome at the same time, or you have two separate relationships? You no, know, threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. Oh, okay. It just got interesting. She was able to have sex with us is because I asked my boyfriend to have sex with her because she was lonely. That definitely complicates the whole situation. Looks like their freakiness was going a little over the roof. The fact that they were all sleeping with each other didn't change Mr. Morton's mind. Oh, trust me. He still believed he could not be the father of Ms. Parker's child, which begs the question, why does he have doubts? When were you intimate with Ms. Parker? The week During of, the wind... The week of Mother's Day, May 11th, I believe. You're intimate that day. The only intimacy we had on Mother's Day was all sex, Your Honor. How you gonna get pregnant off of all judge, sex, Your Honor? Judge. When was Aaron born? December 5th. So, December 5th. Judging from that situation, Judge Lauren was definitely not going to get the answers she was looking for. A new story enters the mix and complicates things even further. Mr. Parker's girlfriend claims she had a totally different guy she was sleeping with. But is Ms. Parker going to deny the allegation? She had to keep reminding him that it's not yours, boy, it's not yours. I had sex with you after he was already in my stomach. Exactly, I said. But you told us that you say? didn't have sex with nobody I just after said you I got didn't pregnant. have unprotected sex. Oh, let's, let's, let's get some, let's yeah. get some control. Let's Let's, let's, I want to understand this story. Your testimony, Ms. Parker, is that you weren't intimate with anyone else during that time? I did not have unprotected sex. At least she didn't deny getting intimate with another man. Now we know there is a possibility that there might be two fathers. Ms. Parker then tries to clear the air of doubt by dropping a truth bomb. She claims she had a miscarriage before getting pregnant for Mr. Morton. Ms. Parker, you stated that you weren't having unprotected sex with anyone else, yes. but you're saying you're only, you only have unprotected sex with Mr. Morton. Yes. Your Honor, yes. Let me explain my side of the story because I'm trying to, you know. Yeah. Be, when my, before my boyfriend went away, I was pregnant by him. That's what they're getting confused. I had a whole miscarriage, Your Honor. A whole miscarriage by this man. All all of a sudden. I sure wasn't buying the whole miscarriage story. And trust me, the judge wasn't either. Moving on from all that drama, Ms. Parker finds out she's pregnant. And at the first instant, she tells Mr. Morton, the baby isn't his. After having an appointment with her doctor, things change. I'm not going to lie. I told him, this is not your baby. Being as though I have a sonogram telling me I'm 13 weeks. So when I go to my first prenatal appointment, they give me a fetal assessment and they say, no, miss, you're eight weeks pregnant. Your baby is due December the 24th. So you went to your appointment and then your due date got adjusted. Yes. So initially, when you got pregnant, they gave you a certain due date. Yes, ma'am. Who knew a child's due date could be changed? Oh, well, in Ms. Parker's case, that's exactly what happened. Aside from the fact that he was denying her and the baby, Ms. Parker was also upset because he had not helped out with the finances of taking care of her child. And spoiler alert, he loved taking care of other people's kids. This feeling that you, he steps up to the plate and takes care of other people's children, yeah, so but does not 
properly take care of baby Aaron exactly. is the basis of your suit. Right. You're suing for $2,047 in child care expenses, things you've spent on baby Aaron That's since right. he's been born, That's and you say Mr. Morton's done nothing. Besides $30 and she hand me down. The whole situation in the courtroom is about to change, folks. And trust me, you will be left in shock. Ms. Parker brings a witness to the courtroom, and guess who that witness is? None other than Mr. Morton's mother. I bet you weren't expecting that to happen now, were you? So yeah, it is your belief that baby Aaron is your is your grandchild? Yes, that's that's us all the way. Have you witnessed your son connect with this child? Yes. And you've connected with the child? Yeah. Well, Mr. Morton's mother sure had a lot to say about their love triangle. The crazy thing about this case was Mr. Morton's mother believed the baby was her grandchild. She even went on to say all her family members accepted the baby, so she has no idea why her son doesn't want to. We do accept him without a doubt. Without doubt. Without a doubt. I don't share his doubts because because that's that's ours. That's she a more. You know my doubts, Your Honor. My I, mother don't know you, anything about the situation. Every time I try to put her into the situation, she don't want to bother. Where are we going from here? With well, I'm gonna tell you where I'm going from this. When you read them DNA tests and that and they tell you that that's that man's son, I'm going to child support. That's where I'm going with this. I'm <laughs> that, going straight downtown. Cool. High time we brought their three-way sexual escapades to a close, right? There's a baby who needs to have a father. Let's see if the envelope is going to give us a shocker. Mr. Mort, you are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no... Come on. To care for that child, and Miss Parker is entitled to half of the child care expenses she has incurred thus far. You admit. There's just something about the name Parker and very messy situations. Mr. Montgomery was beyond upset that Miss Parker led him to believe he was the father of her child. After playing the daddy role for three months, she jumps out of the blue and says her fiancé is the new father. What's making her change her mind? Mr. Montgomery, you say Ms. Parker led you to believe that you fathered her three-month-old son, Timothy Montgomery. You say you were present at the birth, named the baby, signed the birth certificate, but now Ms. Parker says you're not the father. Yes, Your Honor. You've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove that, in fact, you are Timothy's father. Mr. Montgomery seemed to be quite certain he was the father of her child. He starts off by going on a long rant about how he has been the most supportive father ever and how his name is on the child's birth certificate. But Ms. Parker is hell-bent on proving he is not the father of her child. It's my son, you know, I mean, I was there, you know, through the pregnancy. You know, she but allowed me... She allowed me to sit there the and sign the birth certificate. And what the funny part it is because she I allowed me to name the son after my deceased son. father. Miss Parker, why would you allow him to do all of these things? Sign the birth certificate at that time? Did you or did you not believe he was Timothy's father? I thought he was the father. The cat is definitely out of the box. She was sleeping with both men at the same time. Way to go, Miss Parker. She did admit that for a while she believed that Mr. Montgomery was her baby's father. The judge then asks how she managed to end up in bed with two different men, and the courtroom goes up in flames. I was with Mark and and he was always on Xbox. He didn't, right. he wouldn't even have sex with me during the whole pregnancy because he felt weird. Okay. So you're in a relationship, you're not happy. You feel like he's paying more Your attention Honor, to I was a game than he is. When first met, it wasn't even like that. He wasn't this even in the picture right here. from what I said. Her. You are He had done left. He pried on my girlfriend when I was One with at her. a time. Thank God the judge came to the rescue because both men were ready to rip each other in half. Even with Judge Lauren telling both men to take a chill pill, they still couldn't stop yelling at each other. It felt like a wrestling match between Mr. Montgomery and Ms. Parker's fiance. Trust Got and believe it. my son will have what he needs. That's that funny because I'm the one down there right now putting mm -hmm. diapers yeah, on his ass, buying formula, buying my clothes. back and you bet on my girl, homie. So I, I asked because I had a Before feeling. Before you got pregnant, you ended up with Mr. Lanou, right? Your Honor, me and so how did that happen? Mark. The first time he had left was the first time me and her had met. Throughout the whole time, even told him me. that we were sleeping together no, after she, he had No, they didn't. They finally decide to tone down their voices. I never thought that a time would come when both men would quit yelling at each other. With the yelling out of the way, the judge decides to ask Ms. Parker why Mr. Montgomery was present at the birth and not her fiance. Well, here's how that story went. Holding him for the first time, you know, I bring him 
him to, you know, her face, you know, so she can see him because she had a C-section. You know, I'm sitting there crying. I even told myself that, you know, when he was born, I was like, I'm not gonna cry. Was I nervous? No, I was excited because the simple fact of the matter, was I was told that I was gonna be a father. And unlike most men, I was damn proud to hear that I was gonna be a father. Judging from that revelation, you could only feel sorry for Mr. Montgomery. He definitely had high hopes of becoming a father. Ms. Parker's fiance, on the other hand, was riding a different train. He claimed he was furious about the whole situation, but couldn't do anything about it. Mr. Montgomery went through all of the motions, got to oh, be at the hurt. hospital. It, it still hurts. I, he I, named the baby after his father. I mean, he's he's doing the most. No. I actually was going to show up to the hospital, but out of respect for her and that unborn child, refused to because I know that it would have caused a disturbance between me and him. It was really hard to believe her fiance. He didn't even sound that convincing. Now, who's been stepping up as the father of the child? Is it Mr. Montgomery, the man who desperately wants to be the father, or Ms. Parker's fiance? That's the question the judge is trying to figure out. But was she going to get the answer she was looking for? Mr. Montgomery, you haven't been stepping up? Is no. that by choice? She wanted me out. I did. And I granted her her wish. She sat there and came to me, you know, I, I told her, I was like, you, you just don't seem like you want to be with me no more. She said, I don't. She told me she would because rather be with cheating. Luke because, you know, no, she said she would rather be with Luke because he was the more possible father of the child. There were definitely no answers waiting for the judge. That's for sure. Ms. Parker is then asked what she's going to do if she finds out the baby belongs to Mr. Montgomery. In her defense, she claims she's going to let him visit but not spend so much time with the child, but Mr. Montgomery has bigger plans. Mr. Montgomery is in fact Timothy's biological father. What then? I will let him see him. That's... You'll let him be a part of his yeah, life? I would. Just not, you know, taking him places, you know, far away. I want to be able to spend days, weeks, months, years. I want to teach my son right from wrong. I want to pass my father's legacy that he passed on to me, on to my son, t to him. You don't need me to tell you, Mr. Montgomery and Ms. Parker are going to suck at being co-parents. The big question on everyone's mind now is how she is so certain that the child belongs to her fiance and not Mr. Montgomery. What could possibly be her reason? Do you really want Timothy to be Mr. Lanou's child? Yes, I do. you want to be with Mr. No, Lanou? because he is honestly more active with all three of my kids. I want him to be Timothy's father. He's well, more Well, wanting and having a reasonable basis to believe he's the father are two different things. Yeah, you want not him to the be? father, I want to be with him. At this point, there's really no point for the judge to keep dragging the whole situation any further. It's been a whole mess, and the only way out is the results hidden behind the envelope. Are the results going to be in Mr. Montgomery's favor? Let's find out. Mr. Montgomery, you are not the father. Mr. Lanou, you are the father. My baby. <laughs> In my eyes, that's still my son. I was there for his birth. I sat there and was there for the first month and a half of his life. In this situation, Ms. Hubbard wanted to prove to the court that the defendant was the father of her two-year-old daughter, but she didn't stop there. She was also seeking two years worth of child support from the defendant. Mr. Watson Jr. claimed he couldn't be the father. Could he be trying to deny the baby? Ms. Hubbard, you've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to Mr. Watson Jr. that he is the father of your two-year-old daughter daughter, Amiria Hubbard. Yes, yes, Your Honor. You're also seeking two years worth of child care expenses in the amount of $2,150. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Watson, you say you know you are not the father of Ms. Hubbard's daughter. Let's just say she felt more hurt than anger. She claimed it wasn't easy on her side, having to take care of five children and her disabled mother all by herself. Even the judge couldn't hide how sorry she felt for Ms. Hubbard. He hasn't contributed to anything. He hasn't done anything for her. The, nothing. You're doing this by yourself? Yes, ma'am. I'm taking care of my five children and my disabled mother by myself. And how hard has it been for you? Very hard. I see the tears in your eyes. Yeah, very hard. Oh, stop. The, uh, the, uh, when I was pregnant with her, um, he came around and uh, he was supposed to give me some money because I had took him somewhere. He didn't want to give me uh, some gas money. Mr. Watson Jr. sure has a lot of explaining to do. Ms. Hubbard told the judge that he sold her a dream of wanting to be there and take care of her and her child. But in real life, he never wanted to be part of their lives. Well, guess what? Mr. Watson Jr. didn't deny the accusations. So where did it all go wrong? Mr. Watson, is that true? Have you done anything for this child? No, ma'am. I haven't done anything for no. this child. You admit you've done nothing? Yes, ma'am. Why is that, sir? Because I don't think this is my baby. You don't? It is not my baby. Because she lied. But your family has sex with Ms. Hubbard, But her family right? members right, but she did lied you use her. protection? 
No, ma'am. But this was way before. And she his lied. family members. She lied about her date. That revelation definitely took everyone by surprise. One thing was for sure, though. Mr. Watson Jr. came very prepared to defend himself. He brought out a calendar that detailed the time frame in which Miss Hubbard claimed she was pregnant. Here's how that played out. She told you she was three months pregnant. Right. In August. Right. And then you say in October she told so, you she was three months pregnant again. Again, yes. So I'm like. Who does that? Why, why should I believe that's my baby? Oh, but that's a lot of months to be three months that pregnant. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He don't even know. Ms. Hubbard, can you explain this? No. After that back and forth, I can only ask, how did these two even get into a relationship with each other? Mr. Watson Jr. then goes on to express further why he feels Ms. Hubbard is trying to pin the baby on him, and trust me, he had more truth bombs to reveal. She was pregnant. She was three months pregnant. I was like, oh, okay, so I know she probably be pregnant because we did have unprotected sex, so I rode with it. Okay, so uh, September, she sold me an ultrasound. And the ultrasound, she follows me with about four months. Ultrasound looked like the baby was like about ready to come out like no. seven months so i'm like no. you cannot be no four months no look at that baby head i did tell you he had more truth bombs up his sleeve but here's where things get a little tricky all this while ms hubbard believed they were in a romantic relationship because she really liked him but for mr watson jr that was not the case even while he was with her he was cheating with several women oops was um, this I an guess. exclusive relationship? Did you all say we're committed? We're boyfriend no. and girlfriend? Yeah, we was together. No. We was together, but he was still cheating. He, he a dog. On he the time cheating. I wanted to be He still had females. Okay. He was living in a Roman house with a female. He still had females. He talking about they just his friend. I used to stay catching him, but like after um when I caught him after we had sex on Valentine's Day, it, I was done. I was over. That was a lot to handle if you ask me. Now the dynamic of their story takes a new turn. Mr. Watson Jr. drops another truth bomb in the courtroom and claims he is certain he wasn't the only man Ms. Hubbard was intimate with. Hold up, there was another man? I ain't want to look at it because, you know, it's a diary. It might hurt my feelings. So, Temptation told me to go and look at it. I went on and look at it. First page, I see she was talking about her first love. Ooh, ooh, that, and uh, I flipped to another page. It had a condom pack on it. And explaining the dude that she had sex with, how his sex was and everything. Okay, I flipped to another page, flipped to another, it's another condom pack. Right there, so uh, like, on the diary? Now, that was some evidence. Looks like he wasn't lying after all. When Ms. Hubbard found out she was pregnant, what did he do? She told Mr. Watson Jr. immediately, and as you would expect, he denied it to her face. Here is what she did after his denial. Did you go to any of the doctor's appointments? You showed the ultrasound? Did you show up for that? No. She lied the first time. I didn't see him no more. I didn't see him no more until he asked me to do she his lied. hair, and he came over there, and he, uh, he had brought some clothes with him in my house to do his hair. When he had left, he left his outfit. Then I'm my baby. I ain't got time to bet her none. I said, ah, oh, okay, well, let me go on here and sell this little nice outfit. She has definitely been through a lot. It hurts her so bad that in no time she bursts into tears as she talks about how Mr. Watson Jr.'s family accepts her and the child. But for some reason, he just doesn't want to accept the baby. His Look family the members even accept my child. He's the only one that don't accept her. Well, that's because you lied. You've been nah. You're saying, so Miss Hubbard, that believe. this is upsetting you because you yes. say his whole family. Yes. And he keep a, fake crime. He keep her awake. He don't even want her around his other kids. He don't even claim her. Sometimes he claim on Facebook, then he get mad, then I his baby, then he make a show about it. But that's his child. For her sake, I hope Mr. Watson Jr. ends up being the father of her child because he has put her through so much. The results from the DNA are in. It's high time we got a verdict from the judge, so here it comes. Mr. Watson, you are a Marius father. Debbie, Debbie, mm -hmm. like I told you. Sorry. You've been lying on them dates. I'm straight. You've been lying on them dates. And I'm willing to take care of her. I'm out with my other two kids. I promise I'm you, baby. Talk about a messy situation. This would definitely go down as the messiest to ever exist. Ms. Streeter found herself in the courtroom trying to prove that her child belonged to the defendant who lied to her about his marriage. At least the defendant wasn't denying the affair, but was he going to accept the baby? Ms. Streeter, you claim that during your relationship with the defendant, he convinced you to get pregnant with his child, but what you didn't know is that he was a married man. Yes, Your Honor. You say Mr. Hartfield is only denying the child in order to save his marriage. Mr. Hartfield, you say you made a mistake mistake by having an affair, but you know you are not the father of Miss Streeter's child. You claim that Miss Streeter was openly sleeping with other men besides you. As you would expect, Miss Streeter and Mr. Hartfield, the defendant, were not going to go down telling the same story. On one side, Miss Streeter claimed Mr. Hartfield told her he wanted to have a family with her. On the other hand, Mr. Hartfield denied all accusations, claiming Miss Streeter was nothing but delusional. We went to the 
hospital when we got the birth control taken out together, we went together. She's telling you guys a bunch of lies. She tell, I mean, a whole lot of lies. That's convincing. I mean, if I didn't know Annabelle, I'd be convinced. What is true? That's you definitely know. not the truth. We went in and took a birth control out together. That's definitely we not true. We planned this child, and when we even uh, planned the day, you know, I had an app on my phone that tracked my ovulation, and we knew what we was doing when we was having sex. One thing was for sure, though. Mr. Hartfield's hands weren't innocent. I mean, how are you married, and you end up having an affair with someone else? In his defense, he claimed he never kept the fact that he was married a secret from Ms. Streeter. But was that really true? He's trying to make it seem like we was never in a relationship and I, that this never happened. But he just texted me just recently trying to get back with me, trying to tell me he want to be with me. Oh, my God. So that's Is that true, to... sir? No, it is not. Have I have a text message to be with right Ms. here. Streeter? He texted me last night. I have the proof right here. I'd like to see that. You say not he texted you? He texted me earlier this week. After that piece of evidence, Mr. Hartfield was definitely lying through his teeth. Even Judge Lauren couldn't hide her irritation any longer. He was trying to make the situation look like he was the victim. But come on, Mr. Hartfield. We're too grown for all that. Just tell the truth. That is true. I did send those messages. Oh, you did? Yes, I but did. But he's a married Hold on, man hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me explain to you why. Because of this game that she and I like to play, that she likes to play. If I don't do that, Dominique goes ballistic. And yeah. we were playing this game, but now that we're in court, it seemed like some that some old man has been trying to hit on a young lady. But I'm telling you, that is not true. Oh well, looks like the judge might have to hit him with tougher questions before he tells the truth. What the judge wanted to know now was what happened when Ms. Streeter told Mr. Hartfield she was pregnant. It was planned. It was expected. He was excited. Nah, he wanted yeah, a baby. Please. That was the whole point. Uh, the deal. This is the situation. Dominique deal with so many guys. Okay. She found one that was an older guy, and she thought that. I would be a cake, a cake daddy, or however you want to call it. The thing is, is that she found out, hey, you're dealing with a guy that ain't got no money, so now you waste your time. That's not true. That's not but true. Mr. Hartfield sure knows how to lie. At this point, the judge is done listening to whatever stories he's telling in the courtroom. She proceeds to ask Mr. Hartfield's wife if she had any idea her husband was fooling around with Mizzy Streeter. Here's how that drama played out. All of these details and the fact he's still texting this 22-year-old young woman? No, he did not. How did you even find out about this entire affair? The text text message that I received from her. You get a text message. A random text message that says, I'm in a relationship with your husband, have been for eight months, and I'm pregnant. Mm. And that's it. It's really not surprising he kept the whole affair from his wife. I mean, who in their right mind would tell their wife they had an affair? The mind-blowing thing about this drama between Mr. Hartfield and Ms. Streeter was that he was actually excited to have the baby. He was there when the baby was born. He was excited, like, you know, that's my baby, that's my boy. I never got to see none of my kids born. I want to be with you. Let's make this work. We got a child. He needs to be in the house with both parents. Were you I telling didn't... her these things, Mr. Hartfield? No. I tried to get him to sign the birth certificate. The reason why, he signed it at first, but it was time for the witness to see us, and he like, you too anxious about me signing this birth certificate. Could you imagine that? His name was actually signed on the child's birth certificate. Wow. All hands were pointing at Mr. Hartfield. In trying to change the topic, he drops a truth bomb, claiming he wasn't the only man Ms. Streeter was sleeping with. Oh, now it's her and fault. Because I never got her support or anything. Not only that. That's a fact. He had more girlfriends than he that. was talking to me. When I first met him, he had a lot of women he talked to. Of course. A lot. Of course. It was a. Of course. So not only was it me, it was out. other people. Let the talking? truth come yeah. out. That's yeah. exactly what I said. <laughs> Mr. Hartfield was definitely not expecting that to come to bite him in the ass. Isn't Mr. Hartfield tired of all these lies? Because I definitely am. Anyway, you can only hide the truth for so long till it bursts out. And the DNA results are about to do just that. Mr. Hartfield, you are the father. Okay, that's cool. That's okay. Do you understand now what you just made a child with? Right, right. No, do you, no, no, look at me. I don't know what he told you up until this point. I will say that con men like him, they can be very charismatic. You two are both very beautiful young women. 